welcome everyone to Data Science for Everyone. My name is Markham Reed. Today we're going to be talking about data visualization. Data visualization is a way to create graphical representations of data, which is a key step in being able to communicate information and findings to others. Now, in this section, we're going to specifically be talking about ggplot2, and this is a library that allows you to create beautiful visualizations and charts with your own data. Now, even though R has its own libraries that are built in that allow you to create visualizations, ggplot2 applies the grammar of graphics, which allows you to create effective uh, descriptions of visualizations and how data should be represented. Now, this also allows you to turn uh, real data into real insights. Now, learning this library will allow you to make a lot of static visualizations and customize specifics as you need to go along. Now, throughout this section, okay, we're going to be talking about data replication, okay, or replication requirements, and that's what you need to reproduce code for uh, for this tutorial or for any time that you are sharing your uh, data and your analyses with others. The grammar of graphics, which gives us a way to talk about parts of a plot, and we're going to be going over the basics, okay? This is understanding the basics of the grammar of graphics and ggplot as well. And then we're also going to talk about aesthetic mappings, and this is mappings of variables to visual, uh, visualization characteristics. A lot of the time we're going to be talking about being able to reproduce code, okay? Now, to be able to reproduce code throughout this uh, course, you'll need to load the ggplot2 package. And also note that ggplot2 comes with a number of built-in data sets. In this tutorial, we're going to be using the mpg data set. And so let me go over to our studio really quickly so that we can get started. Start off with typing out library. Okay, and ggplot2. And as I said before, we're going to be using the mpg data set. And so let's take a quick look at it right here. Now we can see from this data set, again, it's coming out as a tibble, 234 by 11. So we have 234 rows and 11 columns. Throughout this section, we're going to be talking about the grammar of graphics. Okay, now the, gra the grammar specifically is just like we would with when we have language. The grammar of graphics allows us to construct graphical figures out of different visual elements. Now, this grammar gives us a way to talk about parts of a plot, such as circles, lines, arrows, and uh, words that are common into, uh, that are we can combine into a diagram for visualizing data. Now, originally this was uh, created by uh, uh, Wilkinson, and the grammar of graphics was actually adapted by Hadley Wickham to describe the components of a plot. Okay, and now these include uh, data being plotted, geometric objects such as circles, lines, etc., and uh, that appear on a plot. Also a set of mappings, okay? Now from these variables in uh, data to aesthetics or the appearance of the geometric objects, statistical transformations which are used to calculate uh, data values used in the plot, uh, positional adjustment, uh, which is uh, gonna be used uh, for locating each geometric object in the plot, scale, okay, which is the range of values for our aesthetic mappings, the coordinate system used uh, to organize the geometric objects, and the facets or the groups of data shown in different plots. Okay, now these are organized into components of layers, where each layer has a single geometric object, statistical transformation, and position adjustment. Now when we follow the grammar, we're going to be um, looking at each plot as separate layers of images where each image's appearance is based on some aspect of our data set. Altogether, this is going to enable us uh, to look at plots with a standard vocabulary. Now, let's, let's kind of get down to the basics, okay? In order to create our plot, we're going to first call ggplot function, and this is going to create a blank canvas. Now, second, we're going to specify the aesthetic mappings. And then finally, we're going to add new uh, geometric objects or ge geome layers uh, to our data set. Now let's take a look at that really quick. Okay, so let's get a little bit of room in here. And so we do uh, ggplot 
mpg and again this is right now we're just going to be creating a blank canvas let's pull up a little bit more data here and as you can see this is actually blank you can see that there's just a little bit of a, a gray box here and this is just setting up our canvas now if we do ggplot and we add in an aesthetic in here and talk about maybe the variables we're interested in so let's look at uh, displacement and let's look at highway miles per gallon what we'll see here in just a moment is that we'll get our x and y axes to appear so here on our x-axis we have the displacement and then here we also have the highway miles per gallon finally we're going to be able to add in one more layer here okay and that is going to be our geom layer now for here we're going uh, you can again we notice here for a couple things we have a bunch of different layers that we can add and we'll talk about these as we go through the course but today we're more specifically interested in point geom point and this is going to help us create a scatter plot now when you are adding in a geom layer okay please make sure that you're using the plus sign okay later on in the course we'll start using pipe operators and other sorts of things to create these objects but we need to use that plus sign and so here what we see that our uh, geom point layer is coming up and we have a, a kind of a downward sloping trend in our data and we have our points and now they are uh, they are black and so we'll be able to add in extra uh, aesthetics here in just a moment so aesthetic mappings are going to are uh, whoops okay are going to be properties uh, that we've talked about uh, uh, before okay this is position color size shape and transparency or alpha of of objects and these visual characteristics can be encoded from our data and they can allow us to convey substantial more information so let's go back here and again let's get a little bit more space let me make this a little bit smaller. So if we grab our same data as before, okay, and I'm going to go and we're going to add in one more aesthetic here. We're going to add color is going to be the class object, uh, the class variable. And what are we going to see here? Okay, all aesthetics are actually put inside of this e AES, okay, for aesthetics. And then later on, we're going to be adding in a geom layer. Now, for example, we can add a mapping of this color, okay, for the uh, uh, class characteristic. Now, let's see what that looks like. Hopefully, it'll take just a second. All right, and now we see that this this has uh, shown up. And now, this what we've added in again is the color object, okay, and this is specifically class. And so this has our two seaters have become red, our compacts have become golden, our midsize has become a, a green color, minivans are more of an aqua, pickup trucks are blue, subcompacts are purple, and SUVs are pink. Again, we can add in many other types of aesthetic mappings. Okay, so let's maybe go and let's add in and, and change this up just a little bit. Okay. So let's, instead of having it any specific color, we're going to take out color, and we're going to go down to geom point, and we're just going to make it color is equal to blue. Now, again, notice in this AES function, okay, it's going to call it this, we can control the visual channel uh, based on a specific argument. Now, if we use this this function here we don't even have to use the AES okay but we're using it in uh, again if we put an AES up here comma blue this won't work okay um, because it's not actually part of any specific um, it, it won't actually cause it to become blue but instead what we want to do is go to the geom point and use this visual channel down here inside of uh, the geom method and again this gives us our blue uh, scatter plot as we're looking at here.